Wood pellet stoves and boilers can be a great choice for domestic heating. To find out more about what it's like to have one in your home, I went to visit Donny. Last year, he installed a stove and two solar panels to provide long-term sustainable energy for his home. Morning, Donny. Uh, how are you? Yeah, we're good. Got a, got a good day for it, didn't oh, yeah. <laughs> So, Donny, um, why did you decide to go for the wood pellet boiler? Quite simple. Um, we were all electric and we had a, uh, an open fire backup. And open fire backups, nasty as you probably know, it's dirty and you've got to clean it every day and such like. And uh, the electricity was getting very expensive. The storage heaters had 30 years old or so, so they had run their lifetime. So a decision to make one way or another. So um, we started looking at the, the, all the renewable energy possibilities. Your decision was really purely based on coming to the end of an existing system, looking at what the new alternatives are and sort of projecting forward for the next... That's right, yes. Now this looks a bit complicated, but it's not really... It's incredibly organised. <laughs> yeah. I love it, it's yeah. got stickers. In this cylinder, which uh, has will hold 255 litres of water, there's what they call two coils in it. Uh -huh. And this, this is the solar ones here, and they have a coil in the bottom. Uh -huh. And this one, um, oh, this two are the, are the stove ones from okay. the pellet stove. So it's two opportunities to heat up the, the water in the cylinder, which is used for domestic as well as for the radiators when you want them. But, you know, some days I, I jot down the temperatures. So on the 29th of March at 9 o'clock in the morning, this mm -hmm. is a frosty day mm -hmm. and then sunny, it was two degrees up on the roof. Yep and 23 degrees in the bottom of the tank uh -huh. and 43 degrees in the top of the tank. Okay. Now that was because this, the top of the tank was heated by the stove upstairs and we obviously had it on because it was because a frosty night. Yeah. So as the day went on, you see the temperatures going up at the, on the roof, up mm -hmm. to 45. Mm -hmm. And in the bottom of the cylinder here, the water temperature was rising from 23 to 43, 42. Sure. So uh, the, the solar raised it by 20 degrees. What I like about it, Don, is that it actually I was expecting it to have to be in its own separate hut. It yeah, seems yeah. really it's contained, doesn't yeah. it? So space-wise, it's, it's really it's efficient not, with space no as well. Yeah, yeah. If we can go outside, we'll show you the pellets and the pellet Perfect. store. Last September, I bought 100 bags like this, 100, okay. so you can imagine this was up to here. Double the now, yeah, that cost me £350. Sure. And though I've bought a new lot of 50 bags, I haven't started on them yet. Okay. So £350 from last September to now has given me all the hot water and all the heating that I had all winter. Your payback time starts there, you know. Absolutely. We'll go and have a look at the stove now. This, oh, is, look at this. this is Molly. Gosh, this is quite impressive, isn't it? What, what we could have done is in the room downstairs, we could have had like a traditional boiler, like, like an oil fire, sure, but sure. with pellets, you know. Oh. But then we looked at all the sort of options and said, well, you can get them that you can put in your living room. So therefore, you don't need a radiator and you're, you're getting the heat that convects heat out, convects heat out to the top here. Uh -huh. and, and convex heat out the front through the glass as well. So this actually heats this room when we have it on. There is no radiator, there's no radiator, yeah, there's no other that, heating yeah, in yeah, this just... room. You know, we don't need it. Um, so what I have to do is fill this, not fill it right up, but fill it with pellets. So what we do is we keep some pellets of what, you know, you saw the bags outside. So we just have this, which holds oh, probably two bagfuls, maybe 40 kilos in here. And you just fill them like that, okay. carry them around here and, and uh, put them in the stove. What's in there will keep it going for oh, three or four hours probably, you yeah. know. Yeah. So after oh, I just have a look and you see the pellet levels drop and you just put another load in, you know, and that's it. So it is a, as far as concerned, that's a manual side of it, you know. The, uh, keeping this in as against what I spoke about earlier having a, um, a big hopper outside you would need a pipe coming in here somewhere that, okay. that was automated and could fill it. Yeah. So um, this is the programmer here. It's time to come on at 6.30 in the morning I think and go off again about 7.30 or 8 o'clock sure. or something like that and that comes on every morning at that time. We do it manually 
in the afternoon or evening, again depending on what the conditions are outside. So that way we've worked out, that gives us the best control over the whole thing. Um, so two, three, four, that's it, that's four or five. One of the things um, that we were thinking about was waste. That's mm -hmm. always a byproduct, isn't it? When yeah. we start to look at fires mm -hmm. uh, warming the house, is there any waste then yeah. with this one? What do we have to think about when we come to the end of the day? It takes about two weeks to get anywhere near the top of this uh, ash box. And it's just a case of taking it out like this, carrying it out and put it in your compost or in your garden or okay. whatever, you okay. know. Uh, so will we light it up? I would love It'll to see it. It'll take a little while, but... Sure. Yeah. So all you do, all, all I have to do to light it up is press the on button here. The, there's the start of the pellets coming down into the, the body there. To, now that'll happen for a little while, it's warming up, but gradually you'll see a little uh, flame come. So fantastic. So, I mean, when you talk about uh, sort of support, is there any government incentives? That yeah, we had a 30% grant for installing this. But the system's all changing. Uh, signs of a little spark There's down there now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that's the only time you ever see any smoke in there is when it's, it's lighting up like this. Okay, it there, it goes. there it goes. I mean, we're, hear, we're hearing kind of movement and mechanics going in there. Mm. So does that, is there other... Yeah, yeah you need, you need the electricity power for the initial heat up. Um, of the chamber there and the fan that, that, that's obviously blowing. You can see the flames growing now. It's obviously blowing. So you do need electric power. So if you have a, a power cut, then you have no stove. Mm -hmm. So the answer is, as far as I'm concerned anyway, I'll be buying a small generator. So then, is there anything else as part of the system then? Is, is this... Yeah, the, the only thing that there is, obviously the chimney, you, the original chimneys behind there, you know, you have to put a flue connected into the back of the stove here. You do need ventilation uh, which helps the combustion of the actual thing in the back so we can show you that. We cut away the, the plasterboard there and that takes us right into the back of the stove and this lets the air flow into the back of the stove which helps the combustion of the whole thing, makes it much more efficient. Yep. Not only that, this this bit screws off and we can get in when you've got it once a year we've got to clean the, the steel pipe that's mm -hmm. there. So how many radiators did you put in? So five radiators we have. But again they're thermostatically, thermostatically controlled and can, we don't have them on a lot. We have a big one down in the, the hall front hall where you came in you know and that we leave it on most times and the, the heat convects up stairs and keeps the whole house warm, you know, so it's been pretty effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's really impressive, isn't it? Wow. But if, if you were burning it that all the time, you would need a lot of <laughs> pellets. You know. It will settle down a bit from where it is just now. Yeah, anyway, you know, but, but normally we would just have it at one or two at this, sure. this time of year. So, so my head is just, there's so much interesting information you've given us, but really it's just... It just seems like a fantastic it's system. Have you been happy with it so far? I, am. I wouldn't have any complaints about it at all. You know, uh, one day it'll pay. It'll have paid for itself, but hopefully I'll still be around when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> have you worked out? Have you any idea what time scale yeah, that payback well, would be? Would probably be? about seven or eight years. That's for the solar and for this. That's, know, the, two so that's the two combined. systems. two systems together. Yeah. So okay. in about seven or eight years, it, it should have paid for itself. The payback time, you know, as oil, gas, electricity is going to cost more and more and more, and, and by going up by huge amounts, and here's a product that is that actually could come down in price. I think that that that's the line that should be taken, and maybe would convince a lot more people to have a look at these things and say, oh well, you know, that's good. You can see a case study which includes details of payback times for Donny's system on the Use Green Heat website listed on this page. This also shows the effect of the renewable heat incentive the government aims to introduce in April 2011, paying 9p for every kilowatt hour of heat produced using solid biomass fuels in an automated system, fitted by accredited installers, and they're guaranteeing this for 15 years.